My name is Sherry, and I'm 41 years old. I'm juggling a busy life, working alongside my husband and cheering on my son who's passionate about soccer. When I was a student, my parents never came to my extracurricular activities. But now, it's expected for parents to take turns supporting their kids at my son's middle school soccer club. Honestly, it's a hassle to run around after work. Still, I want to support my son who's all fired up about winning the league championship. So, I can't slack off when it comes to helping out during practice. This year, the team is especially strong. The starting lineup is filled with motivated and skilled players, boosting the team's morale. We're all working hard, aiming for that long-desired championship. But with that comes the inevitable parent interactions within the club. Yes, the so-called parent politics. And lately, it's been causing me some stress. Sherry, you really need to get here earlier! Even though I arrived 10 minutes before the scheduled time, Jewel, a mom who likes to take charge, complains to me. Um, I think I'm on time. Plus, there are others who haven't arrived yet. That's right! For some reason, Jewel always singles me out. Well, Sherry, you make it so obvious that you are busy because you are working. You don't even wear makeup and you never join us for tea. I don't recall ever making such a fuss about being busy. Sure, I don't wear makeup and I can't join daytime tea sessions because of work. It's also true that it is related to work. But what does that have to do with the soccer club? Frankly, if you have to work to make ends meet, I don't know why you'd even think of joining a soccer club. Excuse me? If you can afford to be in this club, you should be a stay-at-home mom with both time and money to spare. Jewel declares. Um, uh, well, I was about to argue, but other parents started gathering and the atmosphere wasn't right for it. My son is doing great as a starter and I generally get along well with the other parents, but every time I see Jewel, I can't help but feel uncomfortable. I've been trying to keep my distance, but then... We live on the top floor of that high-rise, the 40th floor! During a break in a practice game one weekend, Jewel pointed to what locals call the Kitten Tower. A 40-story luxury high-rise that's become a symbol of the area. Oh, really? Confused, I just nodded along. It's not a big deal, it's a luxury condo, but it's too big for just the three of us. It's a hustle to clean without a housekeeper, you know. I didn't know how to respond, but another mom chimed in. The floors about 35 are one family per floor. The 360 degree view is such a luxury. Jewel seemed quite pleased with herself. Ah, I see. Oh, uh, excuse me. My husband just arrived, so I'll be heading out for work. We're switching places to support our son. My husband had worked in the morning and I was scheduled for the afternoon. We had planned to swap roles in supporting our son. While the other friendly moms wished me well, Jewel smirked. Oh, how hardworking you both are. Well, do your best. We'll all be going for tea after the game. All right then, take care. I didn't have time for more chit chat, so I hurried off to work. Fast forward to the next week. Hey Sherry, I heard you live in a single family home. Jewel spoke loudly, unnecessarily so. After you left the other day, your husband and I talked about homes. He mentioned you live in a single family home. Is that true? Um, yes. I gave a vague answer. Sensing something unpleasant coming my way, Jewel grinned at my caution. He invited me over if I ever get the chance, so I'll take him up on that offer. Oh, well, that's not really... It was just a polite invitation, but Jewel seemed to take it seriously. 
Don't you all want to see Sherry's house? She must be proud of it. I'd feel awkward inviting people to my high-rise apartment. It might seem like I'm showing off. I hadn't heard anything about this from my husband, who would have told me if he'd actually extended such an invitation. Cornered, I felt trapped. I tried to think of an excuse, but Jewel had already involved the other moms. You know how upper-class homes offer room tours? I'm sure Sherry's house is small, so we don't need anything fancy. Let's get to know Sherry better, who's always too busy for tea. We'll have a tea party at her house, at her convenience. Jewel started planning right away. I tried to decline multiple times, but she wouldn't back down, saying my husband had invited her. I'd let her arrogance slide because I didn't want to hassle, but her persistence was getting on my nerves. Don't worry, I'm sure you could only afford the house because both of you work. Even if you're a poor family with a low income, I'll appreciate your effort. That was the last straw. Fine, you're welcome to come. I had tolerated her looking down on me and mocking our dual-income lifestyle. But when she started belittling my husband, I couldn't let it slide any longer. Oh, really? Well, I'll take you up on that. But I wonder, will everyone fit in your house? Jewel smirked triumphantly. By the way, avoid the end of this month, okay? We're going on an overseas trip. It's a hustle to prepare, and honestly, traveling too much gets boring. I was fed up with Jewel's self-serving conversation. I was tired of this back and forth. Lately, I'd noticed that Jewel's condescending remarks were making the other moms uncomfortable. If this continued, it could even cause discord within the soccer team. So, I decided to go ahead with the home tour. Finally, the day arrived. I was waiting at the meeting spot when Jewel pulled up in her car. Thanks for coming to meet us. Where is the parking? Oh, I told everyone here is parking because you said so. They'll all be driving here. Jewel grinned. It was obvious she was trying to make a mockery of the situation. You see, her call yesterday went like this. Sherry, does your house have parking? Some people with small properties rent separate parking spaces, you know. Is your parking on site? Her question was only to confirm if we had parking, not whether they could come by car. I hadn't said a word about everyone driving over, but still. Oh, I see. Could you please park over there? There should be plenty of space for everyone else, too. I directed Jewel to an open lot nearby. Oh, I see. Jewel seemed to click her tongue subtly. How convenient that there's an empty lot nearby. As Jewel muttered, the other mom started to arrive. Looks like everyone's here. Thanks for inviting us today, Sherry. So, is that your house? It's quite small and cute. It suits you perfectly. Jewel laughed, looking at a house right behind me. It's amazing you chose to live here, so close to that mansion. It's like you are being shown your limits. <laughs> the other moms looked uncomfortable at Jewel's harsh laughter. I quickly smoke up. Ah, no, our house is over there. This building is for our housekeepers. Jewel burst into laughter when she looked where I pointed. <laughs> oh, on the other side of the mansion. I can't even see it from here. Shall we go? Jewel immediately started walking ahead. Um, Jewel, the entrance is over here. I called out to Jewel as she walked past the gate to my home and then opened it. W wait, this is... Your house, Sherry? What? Jewel let out a scream-like sound. Yes, the mansion Jewel had just mentioned was actually my home. 
The empty lot was a space we were planning to turn into a soccer field for the kids. The cute little house she referred to was the living quarters for our housekeepers. Please, come in. Our home is designed in mid-century modern style. I walked across our simple yet harmoniously designed front yard towards the entrance. Our housekeeper, who had been waiting, greeted me with, Welcome back, ma'am, and helped us inside. Just then, my friend Stella unexpectedly dropped by. Sherry, I found something cute while I was out and bought it as a gift. Oh, am I interrupting? Stella started to leave, feeling awkward in front of the soccer moms, but they insisted she stay, so Stella joined us for tea. Oh, how rude to have friends drop by without an appointment, Jewel muttered, lacking her usual gusto. Ignoring her, I let everyone inside. Let's have a tour of the house later. For now, please have a seat. I'll prepare some tea and snacks. Is this for real? Jewel mumbled, half in shock, as I led her to the great room. The weather was nice, so the doors facing the courtyard were open, revealing well-maintained lawns and shimmering pond. You have a garden and a large pond inside your property? Jewel was speechless. Feel free to explore the garden. My husband designed both the house and the garden, so he'd love to hear your thoughts. While I was explaining, the housekeeper prepared the tea. Today's snacks are from my company, a product we're planning to launch soon. I hope you like them and would appreciate your feedback. The other moms cheered at the sight of the beautifully arranged snacks. Wait, Sherry? Your company? And your husband designed the house? What's this? Were you pretending to be poor? Tricking me and laughing behind my back? Jewel, who had been silent, suddenly blurted out this outrageous accusation. I never tricked anyone. If you didn't know, it's because you never asked. I was utterly exasperated. Let me take this opportunity to explain. I ran a company that focuses on next-generation snacks. Due to hygiene reasons, I can't wear makeup. And because of my responsibilities, I can't be away from the company for long. So, I usually can't join you for tea. My husband also runs an architecture firm, so we are both working professionals. After reintroducing myself, the other moms applauded, but Jewel's mood plummeted. Oh, who cares about this big, empty house? For your information, I live on the 40th floor of a high-rise. Just as I was about to respond to Jewel's sudden outburst, Stella clapped her hands in realization. Sherry, it's her, isn't it? I nodded at Stella's excited question. Then she talks to Jewel. Hey, you live on the 40th floor of what they call the kitten tower, right? Caught off guard by Stella's innocent question, Jewel regained her usual confidence. Yes, so what? Stella grinned and asked, Can you show us pictures of your place? The view from your room, maybe. You must have taken some on your phone, right? Stella tilted her head cutely, and the other moms chimed in, saying they'd love to see the pictures. However, Jewel feigned regret. Oh, I'm sorry. Living there has become so normal for me that I've never thought to take pictures. So, no, I don't have any on my phone. Jewel made a disappointing face. Stella burst into laughter at Jewel's response. What's so funny? Jewel raised her voice, clearly irritated. I just thought it was amazing. You don't take pictures because it's so normal for you? I still can't help but capture the sunrise and sunset. Stella showed us her phone screen, displaying a beautiful sunset and a familiar landscape.
Look, this is the exact image used in the Kitten Towers promotional material. Oh, and there is Mia, my cat! I couldn't help but get excited at the beautiful scenery and the appearance of Stella's beloved cat, Mia. What are you talking about? Jewel scolded, so I decided to enlighten her. She is a real resident of the 40th floor of the Kitten Tower. What? Jewel's tiny scream was directed at the key Stella pulled out. Designed exclusively for the upper floors of the Kitten Tower. It's not enough proof, so you're welcome to come over right now. Jewel's face twisted at Stella's smile. Every once in a while, I get inquiries through the front desk asking if I'm Jewel. Now it makes sense, you are the jewel they were asking about. Stella's expression turned stern. It's quite a nuisance, you know. Confronted by Stella, the real resident of the 40th floor of the luxury high-rise, Jewel, was visibly shaken. Uh, uh, I... I... It seems she has been lying about living on the 40th floor of a luxury high-rise. Not just in our soccer club, but elsewhere too. So, what's the real story? The next time one of your friends asks, you'll have to correct them, won't you? Cornered by Stella's questioning, Jewel trembled like a newborn fawn, attempting to flee. Tell the truth! Yikes! Blocked by an angry Stella, Jewel gasped and shook her head, but there was no escaping the truth. I live on the first floor. Jewel finally admitted, her shoulders slumping. Oh, the first floor. So, if you count from the top, that's the penthouse. Isn't that clever? Should we laugh it off? Though Stella Stone was playful, she was clearly furious. The other soccer moms all looked at Jewel with disdain. You know, some people deliberately chose to live on the lower floors of luxury buildings. Easier access to their apartments, easier to evacuate in case of emergencies, and the property value doesn't depreciate as quickly. But I doubt you had any of that in mind, did you, Jewel? When I asked, Jewel stammered. Uh, I... I have to go. Bye! She hurriedly made her exit, barely even saying goodbye. I don't get why she had to lie about living on the 40th floor when living in a luxury building is impressive enough. As I spoke my mind, Stella burst into laughter. <laughs> you know, Sherry, you might not be aware of this since you've only lived in a single family home, but in luxury high-rises, the price varies greatly depending on the floor. Some people really care about the hierarchy based on which floor they live on. That's probably why Jewel wanted to show off. I love heights, so I chose a high floor, but some people see that as a status symbol. Stella explained. I shook my head. No way, heights scare me. The view you showed me was beautiful and I'd love to see it, but I'd probably freeze if I went up there. My husband even designed our house as a single story because he knows I'm afraid of heights. Stella laughed even more at this. Jewel really picked the wrong person to act arrogant with. Even if she did live on the 40th floor of a luxury high-rise, it couldn't compare to this sprawling single-story home made entirely of domestic wood. The other moms nodded in agreement with Stella's words. I'm not familiar with luxury high-rises due to my fear of heights, but if Stella says so, it must be true. Sorry for putting a damper on our fun tea party, Stella said, looking apologetic. But I was more than satisfied with how things turned out, especially since I wanted to put a stop to Jewel's incessant talking. Let's get back to our tea party, shall we? We all enjoyed the rest of our time together. Three months later, Jewel and her family moved far away. Turns out, she had been spreading lies 
not just in the soccer club, but elsewhere too. When her web of lies unraveled, it seemed like she no longer had a place in this town. I was initially worried about our soccer team, but with Druval's self-righteous leadership gone, a kid who had been hiding his skills suddenly blossomed. In fact, the team's atmosphere and skill level improved so much that winning the league now seems like a real possibility. Between you and me, I was really fed up with Jewel's arrogant attitude. Thanks to being friends with Sherry, I can now go support the soccer club without any worries. I really appreciate it. It seems like the bonds among the soccer moms have deepened even more. Let's aim for the championship, guys! Sporting my energetic child as they run around, along with my hard-working husband, is my daily joy.